Well, hello, guys. Um, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening to every one of you. Thank you so much for those who are always on time or previously to the time we're supposed to start a class. So, um, well, guys, today is our 15th class, which means that we just have one more class, which is going to be tomorrow. And after that, it's going to be all. So I hope every one of you, like, whenever you have the time to study, if you, I mean, if you study like the verbs and all those things that we have so through the, I mean, that we have seen, I'm sorry, throughout the, the module. So that's going to be very important for you. And obviously it's going to help you to, um, to speak more, to, to get to know some grammatical things that you probably didn't know. <clears throat> so as usual, I'm going to ask you if you can hear me clearly uh, or is there any interference while I'm speaking or is, is everything fine? I'm gonna take that, that as a yes. Okay, so today guys, as usual, I'm going to ask you some questions regarding to the last topic that we saw. And yesterday we saw or we checked some of the differences that we have between the simple past and the present perfect. Yesterday, we couldn't complete all the exercises because some of you were struggling and like trying to, I mean, to understand whether it is simple past or present perfect. And I know that sometimes it's not gonna be that easy. So let me ask you a question before we start. Does any one of you remember what is the main difference that we have between the simple past and the present perfect? What is the main or one of the main characteristics that we have between the simple past and the present perfect? Can someone mention one characteristic that we have? Nobody? Nobody wants to say anything today. Are you there? Hello. Hello. The present perfect mm -hmm. is for the for the time. Uh -huh. How do you say indefinido? Undefined. Undefined. Mm -hmm. And the past simple is uh -huh. for the time definido. <laughs> Define. Okay. Mm -hmm. Define. Okay. Okay, that's a good characteristic. What about the other ones. Does any one of you remember anything about what we saw yesterday, or something that you understood, or any difference that you think it is correct between the simple past and the present perfect? Any characteristic that you might remember? Or was on, or was Sonia the only one that was yesterday in the class? Well, apparently, solamente Sonia estuvo ayer en la clase. Apparently, in the present perfect, mm -hmm. the action that started in past. Okay. In the present. Uh huh. Um, in past simple. No sé cómo se pronuncia solamente. Only. Uh, only started and finished in the past. It started and finished in the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the main characteristics that we have. Thank you so much, Rosemary. So that's like 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 that's the main one that we have. So when it, when someone asks you something regarding to 
present perfect and simple past, what we usually say is what Rosemary said. We usually say present perfect, an action that started in the past, we're still doing that action in the present and we will probably still be doing or we will still do that action in the future, probably, but we don't know. Simple past action that just started in the past and finished in the past. So um, let me see. Do you guys remember any of the key words that we saw yesterday? Key words for the present perfect. Keywords for the present perfect. Mm -hmm. Yet. Yet. Okay. That's one. Signs. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, I don't know if you try to say scenes. Is that what you were trying to say? Scenes? Yes, scenes. Ah, okay. Because I heard, escuché ciencia, science. Science, sí, así lo dije, pero sí. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, right. I'm ready. Which one? I'm ready. Um, I, I really don't understand. Can you say that again? Oh, already. Is that what you mean? Already. Oh, okay. Already. Yeah. Okay. No problem. So those actually are some of the expressions that we have for the present perfect. Uh, what about the simple past? Which keywords can you tell me? Yesterday. Yesterday? Mm hmm last week last week excellent what else something else no what about if if I want to say something referring to last year, last, last year. year, yeah, last year, that's that's very good. What else? If I want to say something related to my childhood, mm hmm. Yo sé que estoy hablando en otro idioma, ¿verdad? Pero, what's going on today? When I was. When I was. That's what I was trying to say, when I was, okay? Perfect, thank you very much. So, um, es, espero que esas energías, ¿verdad? Las estén guardando para mañana. I hope so. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm expecting. So guys, today we are going to go one by one with all the expressions that we saw yesterday. So today we are going to understand how to use all of them, but today is going to be focused in the present perfect. So today we are going to understand how to use all the time expressions that we have. We are also going to have uh, uh, practices because I need you to Practice the verbs. De nuevo vamos a practicar los verbos, ¿verdad? Así que espero que estén listos de nuevo. ¿Ok? Ayer, I was checking some of yours. Algunos de ustedes y algunos no prestan atención a las indicaciones. Algunos, de la manera en que yo lo estaba diciendo, de esa manera lo escribieron. So, and now I didn't say that. So that's why today we are going to practice once again the verbs. Why? Because I need to force you. Si usted no lo quiere estudiar en su casa, entonces aquí lo vamos a forzar. ¿verdad? A la fuerza. O se los aprende o se los aprende. 
pero aunque sea de aquí, uno, dos o tres se le van a quedar y después va a decir, ok, aunque sea la fuerza me hizo que me aprendiera esos tres. But I did it. So that's what, that's what we're going to do today. So let's start with today's class. So let me share the screen with you so you can have an idea about what we're going to talk about today. So as I was saying some minutes ago, it's going to be focused on the time expressions that we have in the present perfect. And uh, just let me share the screen. Okay, here we have. Okay, can everyone see the, the slide? Yes. Okay, cool, thank you very much. So as you can see there, we're going to talk about time expressions today, and we are going to have some examples that are going to help you to understand the exactly or the placement or the position that you have or where you have to use them in a sentence. So you don't make grammatical mistakes when it comes to pronunciation and writing, okay? So uh, as, as this part is just a reminder, a reminder, remember these two are what? What are these? These auxiliary teacher. Those are auxiliaries. So the reason why I'm always putting this on the slide is because I need you to understand which pronouns do we have to use with each one of the auxiliaries in the present perfect. Once again, have, I'm going to use them with I, you, we, they, and has, he, she, it, which we call third person. Simple as that. So let's move on to what we're going to be focusing on today. Today, as I said, we are going to know time expressions. In the present perfect, we use the following time expressions. We use just, always, and always is also what? How do we call a to always? What's that? Siempre. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the meaning in Spanish, but in English grammar, how do we call to that? Fre uh, frequency adverb. Frequency adverbs or ad adverbs of frequency. Those are the ones that we saw like a week ago or something like that. We are going to also check already and yet. Already and yet. So as you can see here, between parentheses, we have an idea uh, in which situations we have to use already we are going to use it only for positives, and yet we are going to use it for negatives and also for questions. We are all, uh, also going to understand how to use ever and never, since, for, lately, and recently. What is lately and recently? Do you remember that? No? No. Do you consider lately and recently can be part of the adverse of frequency too? What do you think? Is that possible? Yes, teacher. Refer, refer a time. Refer a time. So Vilma, why do you think it is, it is possible? Why do you think so? Because I, um, it's about the, um, uh, lately it's como. Because I we're talking, yes. yeah, we're talking also, we're also talking, I mean, about frequency, right? So I think, I, I guess that's what you're trying to say. So yes, that's correct. So we are going to see also this part that we didn't see before. The reason why we didn't see it before is because this part was going to be focused on time expressions. When we say time expressions, we do not, we're not only focused on the ones that I just said. We are going to also know some other time expressions 
like such as this one. If I say this week, like uh, this month or something like that, those are also time expression. Once again, I repeat, it doesn't mean that only the ones that I just said are time expressions. There, uh, there are some other time expressions that we also have in English, but the ones that we are going to see today are only focused on simple, um, I mean, in present perfect. The other ones are going to be used in different situations, but these ones that we are going to see today are only for present perfect, okay? So in this part, we have the past section or time that isn't finished. Uh, can I have a volunteer uh, that can help me reading the example there? I have been to the circus twice this week. Okay, I have been to the circus twice this week. If we say that, obviously it is a past action. I mean, if it says that I have been twice, it's because this person probably came yesterday or a week ago. That's why it refers to a past action that it isn't finished yet. Why? Because this person probably came today to the circus and that's why this person is saying, I have been to the circus twice this week. Is it understandable the past option with the time, uh, when the time isn't finished? Teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say twist in Spanish? Twice. 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 That's dos veces. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's like if I say two times. I mean, if okay. I say two times, uh, también es correcto, es correct to say two times, but if you say twice, that will make you sound native. Te hace sonar si tú dices twice en vez de two times, eh, te escuchas como o, o es vocabulario de persona nativa. So we say twice, but you can say two times too. It doesn't mean that it's not correct. Okay. So I will guess that your silence is a yes. So I will move on to the next part. And here we have also to express past action, period of time that isn't finished. There it is when we are going to use the time expressions that I just mentioned some moments ago or a moment ago. So you have one example there. You have already had six cakes. When I use already there, it's like if I'm saying a job. It's like uh, you have already six cakes. Ya, ya tuviste, eh, o, ya, o ya tuviste eh, seis pasteles, little cakes or cakes. So we are going to go one by one today. Obviously, we're going to see some more examples which are going to help you to clearly understand the position in the, uh, in the present perfect. So we're going to move on to those. And here we have the time expressions for the present perfect scene. So we're going to go one by one. Sonia, can you help me reading the first part ever? Okay. Ever, position, before the main verb. Example. Have you have you ever met a fam famous person? Have you ever met? Meet. Have you ever met a famous? Meet. So the time expression ever is always going to be used for questions. Okay, for questions or. In the British English, it can be, or in the British accent, 
it can also be possible to you to be used in the, in the negatives, but in American English, no. So we are going to forget about the British accent and we're just going to focus on the British and the American English, okay? So in the American English, we are only going to use ever when we want to make a question using the present perfect. As you can see here, the position, it says that the position of the word ever is going to be before the main verb. So here we have have, which is the auxiliary, you, which is the subject, ever, which is the time expression, met, which is the main verb. Let me ask you a question. What is the present form of the verb met? Meet. Meet, okay. So that's the present form of the verb met. Is this verb right here in past, in simple past or past participle? Simple past. Simple past. The other ones, do you agree with what she said? No. Past participle. Past participle. Why? Because when we use the present perfect, we would always put the verb in past participle. So now let's go with part number two. And let me see, uh, Rosemary. Help me please, Rosemary, with the part of already. Already, before the main verb or at the end of the sentence, mm -hmm. he has already mm -hmm. been to three big no sé cómo se pronuncia. matches. Matches. He has been to three big matches already. Already. So, already. In this part, when we have already, it says that we have two positions. These two positions, both of them are very, very common when we speak in English. We just speak automatically and those time expressions come out automatically of our mouth. So, uh, but it's very important that you understand the position. In this case, the position of the time expression already, we can have two. The first one is going to be in the middle the, of, of the auxiliary and the main verb. As you can see, subject, auxiliary, time expression already, and main verb. Now, what is the present form of the verb being? B. B. That's the verb B. Okay. So uh, the meaning doesn't change if I put already in the middle of the sentence or if I put it at the end of the sentence, the meaning still the same. So it doesn't change. The meaning is still the same. So if I say he has already been to three big matches or if I say he has been uh, two, three big matches already, I'm still saying the same thing. It doesn't change, okay? So what does it mean already? As I said before, it's like if I'm saying ya. It's like, el ya ha estado en tres grandes torneos, en tres grandes partidos. El ha estado en tres grandes torneos. Ya. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So do, but do we have any questions so far or we're kind of understanding? Well, I hope you're understanding. So let's move on then. Let me see, Vilma, can you please help me with the part of just? Yes, just before the main verb. I have just got back from Italy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, uh, just, it means like a cavarde. So it's when I say like, I have just caught, got back from Italy. It's like if I say, uh, acabo de regresar 
de Italia. So I have just got back from Italy. So the position of this uh, time expression just is going to be pretty much as the, uh, the ones that we saw before. Just as you can see here, it's like between the main verb and the auxiliary. Let me ask you a question. These two words, how do we call to these two words? The union of those two words, how do we call them in English? Phrasal verb. Phrasal verb, okay, that's a phrasal verb. Thank you very much, Maximo. So now uh, let's move on to the next part, which is jet. And I will need, let me see. Um, Fatima Guardado, can you please help me, Fatima? Hello. Uh, we cannot listen to you. Probably you're having any kind of interference or any situation with your microphone. So let me see, Emperatriz. Okay, yet at the end of a sentence, mm -hmm. they haven't been uh, bro, yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we have to understand in this part is that this time expression is going to always be at the end of the sentence, always at the end. But another part of this one is that I can use the same time expression to make a question. How is so? Let me write that down here. What if I want to make the same sentence that I have here, if I want to change that to a question, how do I do that? It's like, haven't, haven't they been abroad yet? So that's what we have. So if I make these same sentences, if I change it to a question, I can use the same time expression yet as a question and as in negative sentences, negatives and questions. Keep that in mind. And this one will always be at the end. What does it mean? It means like if I say they haven't been abroad yet, Todavía o aún. Those are the meanings that we have for, for yet. So what I'm telling you is that even though you use it for the negatives and, uh, and it is at the end, when you make that a question, it will also be at the end. It doesn't mean, uh, I mean, it means that you will never have to use it in the middle. Uh, the, the position of this one is going to be always at the end. Okay, so do we have any questions so far with the information that we just saw or it's, it's been clear at, at the moment? Teacher, only I want you listening. Mm -hmm. Okay, es que hace un ratito me hizo la pregunta y no sé qué sucedió con mi micrófono. Y solo oh, yeah. ahorita estoy probando, viendo el espacio. Nada más, gracias. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see, I, I, I thought that your microphone was probably not working. Okay, so let me see, Sonia, would you like to help me with never? Never, before the main verb. She has never won a prize. She has never won a prize. Now, let me ask you a question. If I use never, Am I giving negative sense to that sentence? Yes or no? Yes. Why do you think so? Or why do you think that? Uh, because never mm -hmm. is nunca. 
Yeah, nunca. Okay. So, of course, uh, for example, I need you to understand that we are going to use never when, when we want to give an answer to questions with ever. For example, if I say, uh, have you ever met a famous person? How would you answer to that question? ¿Cómo responderían a esa pregunta? Give me your answer in the chat, please, right now. How would you answer to that question? Have you ever met a famous person? How would you do that? I can see Vilma already. I have never met a famous person. Okay, that's a good one. Nancy, I have never met a famous person. Okay, that's a good one too. We are 12 guys, we are 12. What about the others? Are you still, okay, I got Maximo. Have you Maximo? Like in real or is that just an example? Have you? Example. Oh, okay. I thought that you have. Okay, cool. What about the other ones? Are you still thinking about it? Nancy, I got yours already. I have nevera. I understand. Entiendo que son los, los teclados. Que a veces the keyboards, some, sometimes they don't want to help us. Sonia, I can see yours too. I have not met a famous person. Okay, that's another one. That's another way we can say that, okay? Rosemary, that was good, okay. All right, so probably, I mean, I have never met a famous person. I have met a famous, she's a Salvadorian soccer player. Okay, that's that's good. Is that, is that true, Fatima, or is it just an example, too? Yes, it's true. Oh, it's that's a, true. It's a student mm -hmm. in my work. And oh. She, she lives in, in France. Oh, in France. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's cool. That's perfect. Okay. So, uh, well. I want, I want to tell you that I can see a variety of answers. And I really like that because, I mean, I can see that Vilma, she used the time expression never. Nancy also used the time expression never. Maximo, he decided to go with the positive way. So he omit to use the word never, but he used a perfect grammatical um, structure, that's perfect there. So we have Nancy, I have never, that's that's good too, because you decided to use the time expression. Sonia made something different. She, even though she made it negative, she decided not to use the time expression, but she only used the negative form without using a time expression, but still, that's a perfect grammatical part there. It's very, very, very good. Then Rosemary, she decided to say, uh, to use the time expression never in give to, uh, what she was trying to give like a negative sense to it. Fatima, that's perfect too. So um, that's the same person. La misma persona siempre participando, but I do appreciate that. Because as I told you, since the beginning, if you participate, I will take that into consideration for your scores at the end, okay? So um, let me see if there's no questions about the ones that we just saw, which are ever, already, just, yet, and never, we're going to move on to the next one, which is four. In that case, I will need a volunteer 
I don't want to ask a name, so I will ask for a volunteer. Me, teacher. Nancy, go ahead. Thank you very much. For before a time period, a mm -hmm. year, three day, two hour. Two hours, uh huh. He hasn't been to a big match for year. Four years, okay. When we say that, or when we use four guys, as it says obviously there, four, we are going to use it before a time period. What does it mean? Every single time that we talk about a time period, such as a year, three days, two days, one day, one month, two hours, one hour, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When we use that and when we want to use some of those or time period, we will always have to use for. If I have, we have the example, he hasn't been to a big match for years. What do you guys understand by that? Silence. Okay. Teacher, él no ha estado en, en ¿cómo se llama esto? Um, match is like, uh, uh, yes. match is like, uh, como un par, uh, uh -huh, un torneo, yes. I, I, un torneo, uh -huh. Uh -huh. for years, por años, por años, okay, so that's pretty much it, I mean, the use of for we usually use for every single time when we speak English. Or when you try to say something in English, you just use it automatically. You are never thinking about it. Okay, uh, let's use for just because I'm talking in present perfect. You never do that in the, in the real life. In the real life, you just speak automatically and you just, uh, you are all obviously going to use those time expressions without you even noticing that you are using them. It's like automatically. Okay, so we're going to go to the part of scenes and I would like to have a volunteer too. Me. Oh, okay. Claudia, let's go. Guys? Scenes. Scenes mm -hmm. before a point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, 2010, five o'clock this morning. I have been abroad. Uh, what is pronunciation? Abroad. This? Abroad every year since. 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 <laughs> Perdón. Since um, one thousand three. The, I mean, there you can say 2003 or you can say 2003. Okay. 2003, okay? That's that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, I don't know what, 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 what's, but every single time when we teach these time expressions, the majority of students always pronounce it uh, like signs. I don't know why, but that's not the pronunciation. The pronunciation is since, okay? Since, keep it in mind. So what's the difference between for and since? Sometimes we tend to confuse them because sometimes when we use like 2003, that you might think, oh, but that's a t time period, but actually it's not, why? because it's a point in the time. What does it mean? It's something as specifically that happened in a period of time. So it doesn't have to, it's nothing related with time period. It's something as specifically that happened in a period of time. So that's why, and there we are going to use since. What's the meaning of since? Does any one of you know what's the meaning of that word? Desde. Desde, okay? So every single time that you want to say, um, let me see. Vamos a ver. 
Let me type something on the chat in. Let me see. Let me. Hmm. So oh, I want to see your, your answers to that. That's in Spanish, of course. Uh, I wanted to write Nino, but my keyword, because it is in English, it doesn't have the ñ. So in English, we don't have that. So I need, necesito que todos me escriban esa oración in English, like right now. Por favor, ser honesto. Si usted no sabe el verbo, no vaya a buscarlo en internet. Sea honesto. Si no lo sabe, deje el espacio. Pero no se mienta usted mismo, ¿ok? Do not lie yourself. ¿Ok? So, let's see. Okay, I just have Vilma and Fatima. Claudia. Okay. Nancy. Okay. What about the other ones? Okay, so nobody, okay, I have Maximus too. I have Elizabeth, okay. Now, I'm checking all your answers and I see that some of you just for one small word, your sentence is not correct. Just for one small word. Let me see, let me check the other ones. Pupus is a child, one a child. One plus is a was a child. So let me tell you that right now with the answers that I have until now, there's only two people, two that got it correctly. When I say correct, it's because it is grammatically correct. Because what I was trying to say, or what I said is, yo he comido pupusas desde que era un niño. So in this case, only Vilma and Juan Cruz got it correctly. Solamente ellos dos lo escribieron de la manera correctamente, gramaticalmente correct. And let me tell you why. En las eh, Fátima Guardado, since a child, if you say that, si tú dices algo como eso, since a child, tú me estás diciendo ahí, desde un niño, no desde que yo era un niño. So, Claudia, you said since what have a children? Desde que tener un Un, un niños. So it doesn't make sense at all. Nancy Maldonado, since. Lo único que nos faltó ahí, ¿qué fue, Nancy?
What's, what's missing there? ¿Qué nos faltó ahí? El pronoun, el pronombre. Since I was a child. Máximo. In that part, estabas casi correcto únicamente porque me agregaste when. Desde cuando. So, uh, I don't know what, I mean, that word there, it's, it's not correct. Uh, I mean, because you're using since. So if you say that, si tú dices eso, es como que lo estuvieras traduciendo literalmente de español a inglés. So that's why it's not correct. Eh, Elizabeth, por un poquitito también. It was just a small difference. ¿Qué es lo que estaba faltando ahí? I, since I was a child. Sonia, le faltó since y le faltó I. Juan Cruz, that's correct. Rosemary, en vez de that, era I. Since I was no children. Porque children es el plural. ¿Cuál es el singular? Child. Un niño. Child. Nancy. Uh, we were just missing there the pronoun I. Carlos Antonio, also the pronoun I. So those small details son pequeños, pequeñísimos errores, actually. But those small details can make a big difference in English. I mean, it's not like if you say it in that way, uh, they are not going to understand you. It doesn't mean that. Because as I said, some of them don't even use the grammar correctly. Uh, and that same happens in Spanish. I mean, we, when we speak Spanish, we do not use our grammar in Spanish correctly. We don't do that. We speak Spanish like, like the way our parents taught us or the way that we learn Spanish since we were a child. Uh, but the same happens in English. Some people do not speak English with all the grammatical rules. So, but in this case, uh, we, we do it in that way because we want you to speak like a very formal English. So it's like a standard English for every one of you. Now, do we have any questions so far? Alguna pregunta hasta el momento? No questions. No questions. No questions. Okay. Sonia. Sonia, you had a question or not? Yes, yes. Okay. No uh, recuerdo. Es science? Scenes. Scenes. I'm sorry. Scenes. Um, my question is in mm -hmm. the... Dice que se debe usar por un tiempo. Entonces yo había entendido que era como un tiempo corto, pero según el ejemplo que nos había puesto, significa que el sign se puede usar independientemente de cuánto tiempo estemos hablando. Sins, no sign. Sins, Ok. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I mean... Okay. Eh, cuando decimos un punto en el tiempo, eso es a lo que me refería. No estamos hablando de un periodo de tiempo. Un periodo es algo muy diferente a que yo digo un, un punto en el tiempo. Porque yo digo desde que era un niño. En eso yo me estoy refiriendo a un punto específico en el tiempo de toda mi vida. ¿Sí? O sea, yo soy un adulto ahorita y me fui... Hasta allá atrás y dije, me moví a un punto en el tiempo y dije, desde que era un niño. Es por eso que, que utilizamos since. Since. Ajá. Uh -huh. Since. Okay. Signs, ok. Ok, thanks. Ok. So I hope it's clear. So we're going to go with the last part, which is how long. How long. It's a question that we are going to ask or that we are going to use for what? ¿Qué significa how long? Cuando vimos las WH question, we saw that information. What's the meaning of how long? Time, how long, cuánto tiempo? 
How long? Cuánto tiempo? Exactly. It's at the beginning of a question. So if I say, how long have you known Paul? Por cuánto tiempo has conocido a Pedro, verdad? Paul. Or Pablo, I'm sorry, Pablo, Paul. How long have you known Paul? Por cuánto tiempo has conocido a Pablo? So every single time that we have how long, it's very important that you know that you can also use the present perfect when you have the WH question, how long, okay? It's, it's useful there. So when someone asks you the question like that, how long have you known Paul? ¿Cómo respondería? I have known Paul. Utilizarían for or since? For. 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 Let me see. Maximo, why for? Can you give me your answer? Give me your possible answer to that question. I have now Paul for five years for five years but what if you have to use scenes can you use scenes there yes okay can you give me an example using scenes i have no poll since 2003 2003 there you go. So as you can see there, we have to consider, tenemos que tomar, we have to take into consideration if we use since and for, and we also have to take into consideration when we use for, we have to remember that we're talking about a time period. And when we use since, we have to remember that we are talking about a point in the time, which is something completely different. So do we have any questions right now? If there's no questions, we are going to go to the practice. No questions at all? Okay, let's move on to the practice. And we have, let me see. No, it's not this one. This one, okay. So I need you to take a screenshot of that as quick as possible. So this is the only one that we're going to do right now. And then we're going to, that's what we're going to finish with, okay? So let me know when you're done so I can stop sharing the screen and we can go directly to the workout rooms. Well, I think that you're done by this time. So we'll stop sharing. And we're going to go to the breakout rooms. Let me see here. And we're going to move this person for here, this person for here. And let me see this one, no. This one here and this one here. Okay, let's go please.
in Madrid. Four. Okay. Okay. Has. has. Hasen. Ah, no, has. 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 Go to. Never. 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 Went. Went to. No, 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 no. Never. No. Never. Go. Gone. Gone. To Australia. Go. Went. Gone. Okay. Number five. Um. How? Have. Have. Have you? Heard. 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 How you heard oh. the news yet? Heard the news heard. yet? Okay. Number six. Mary. Mary has. 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 But. No, no. But. 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 A, a new, new has. has. It is past yeah. perfect. Okay. Have, uh, you ever ha have, you, been? have you ever been in Madrid? Have you, have you ever, ever been? You ever been? Been? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. been? Es que no recuerdo si el ready se puede poner de último, parece. O va de último, no recuerdo. Okay. Pero sí lo tienen que estar en el en... Ahí está el teacher, pregúntale, pregúntale. <clears throat> okay, so I'm pretty sure that you finished this part. I mean, it was not complicated. It was like pretty easy just to put some things in order and just to use some of the things that we already saw. So we're just going to wait for the other ones to come back to the main session so you can still see that some of them are still there. Let me see. Yes, some of them are still there. So just wait for them five seconds, actually. Okay. So now they all have to come back, okay? There they are. All right, so let me see, can I have uh, Claudia? Please go ahead, Claudia, and help me with number one. Uh, see, <laughs> she has uh, finished mm -hmm. her English exam. And what happened with the time expression already? Um, uh, already? She has already finished her English exam. Finished. Remember the pronunciation in past. Sonia. Number 
number two. Mm -hmm. Paul has just uh, eaten. Eaten. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The last one, Maximo, can you help me with number three? Have you ever been in Madrid? Okay, perfect. So we're just going to have those examples because the time is already done. Guys, remember that you have until tomorrow or we will give you some hours for Friday to complete the platform. So it's either today and tomorrow that you will have to complete it. So you don't have any situation at the end. So remember that tomorrow is our last class and I need you to be ready for the evaluation, okay? So I hope to see you tomorrow, guys, at the same time by the same channel and have a good night, okay? See you tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.